Do any of their theories of consciousness intrigue you, or do you find that objective reduction, OKR, OK has just got it going? And that's the one. They all intrigue me, and I check them all out, and I think we're, we're, uh, we're better than, than, <laughs> than, of course, I, I'm biased, but I, I'm, I'm also, you know, I've also run the, the Science of Consciousness Conference for 30, 31 years. Yes. So I've seen them all, and I've, I've known almost all of them. But uh, you mentioned John Joe, and uh, uh, he is a quantum biologist, but the semi theory I don't think is particularly quantum. Uh, it's electromagnetic field theory, and there are, are a lot of those uh, now. And uh, um, but uh, and electric fields can shape the cytoskeleton, actually. But when they say that, my question would be, what's the frequency of the field you're looking at? Because I think these the fields they're talking about are are oscillating, or they sh some fields in there are oscillating. And we know from Honorbond's work that they're oscillating at multiple scales. And so, for example, uh, you may have an oscillation at the gamma, you know, 40 hertz oscillation. Okay, that's a field. So that's one. But if you look at smaller, faster inside, uh, which Honorbon has done, you, uh, you, so you see activity in hertz, like in EEG, 40 hertz. But you see also see activity in kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, and terahertz. Every three orders of magnitude. And he's found traces to the microtubules, or he found it in microtubules. So uh, basically, the initial experiments were if you, you take a microtubule and you, well, he actually looked at it in three different scales, but starting at the middle scale, and you attach electrodes to it uh, at, at either end, and then, and then four, uh, four more, you use two to stimulate and two to record. Now, if you just put a voltage uh, across a microtubule, it's an insulator. But if you put an alternating voltage, an alternating current, um, and you will find uh, certain frequencies when it becomes highly conductive, like almost a superconductor. Mm. And, and when it does that and plot the resonance, it, you get a particular pattern, so, which is the same every three orders of magnitude. It's a triplet pattern, and each triplet peak has three. So it's a triplet of triplets. And you see that in, in, uh, in kilohertz, uh, uh, megahertz, gigahertz, and terahertz. And in microtubules, and also in tubulins, even in the individual tubulins, and even coming from cells, so it's it's all kind of coupling together. And now you can measure it from the scalp and EEG, or what he calls DDG for dodecanography for twelve orders of magnitude. So, and we've done some preliminary experiments with with megahertz, and some more of that is coming out uh, hopefully soon. And I think it's been pretty exciting uh, looking at effects. Uh, well, I'm not going to say. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Uh, but have, um have you and roger made an agreement you have to wait do we have to wait for it uh what's that you and roger you've made a made a pact let's keep this a secret until it's oh, wasn't roger no uh honor oh, okay i see uh, tell, Stuart, so the when i think about theories of consciousness something i like to explore on this channel is what are the philosophical implications of this theory so there's many ways we can go into this with orco r what would you say are some of the philosophical implications on, let's say, the hard problem itself and the concept of free will? Well, hard, the hard problem itself, you know, uh, we we fall back on consciousness experience being uh, fundamental. And so we're dealing at the level of space-time geometry, the Planck scale. And, uh, you, you know, a lot of people are trying to ascribe it to something in physics to make a connection between uh, the brain and consciousness and the universe in some way. In fact, that's a major theme of our conference in, in uh, Spain, uh, in Barcelona in July, uh, the science of consciousness. And uh, basically, uh, this connection between the quantum effects of the brain and, and fundamental space time. And we have not only Roger, who started this all off, but uh, uh, Federico Fagin and Nassim Harriman and uh, a bunch of other, uh, Don Hoffman and a bunch of other people. So it's going to be pretty pretty cool because we're actually going to take this seriously and say okay how is there a connection you know Roger's objective reduction was the first but Nassim uh he and his he and his team are looking seem to be finding triplets in space time so that would be an amazing connection and uh and Honorbon will be there too of course I didn't mention him but uh uh he's also by the way can I talk about? I think I yeah. He's he's building a self-organizing quantum computer in India, and uh, other people are doing that too. But I think he started it. And uh, warm temperature, self-organizing, organic quantum computer. So uh, 
we'll be hearing about that at the conference and also about uh, his other amazing stuff, the uh, checking megahertz. So, um, uh, yeah, so things are good in microtubule orca warland, I think, uh, <laughs> even though the rest of the world hasn't figured it out yet. You know, I think there's a little suppression and and uh, and, and po politics. I think, uh, you know, AI is again, okay, the multiple worlds people are against us uh, because that would invalidate them because you can't have multiple worlds in, in or orca war. Uh, AI is against us because uh, we uh, were uh, kind of uh, undermining the idea that, that uh, the brain is a complex computer of simple neurons, and therefore a, an AI can be conscious because it's the same thing. It's a complex arrangement of simple on-off switches, and uh, ignoring the fact that it's biology, and we and we don't know what life is. I mean, that's we still have don't know what life is, and. Um, I'd like to come back to that because that's what I'm doing now in astrobiology, searching for the origin of life. But um, as far as Orca OR, uh, you asked about the philosophical implications. So the hard problem by access, by connecting is the fundamental level of the universe, which is also spiritual. And it kind of says, addresses, you know, our place in the universe and, and who we are, which I think would be good to know. And, uh, you know, if, if you're a computationalist, you pretty much except the fact that consciousness is epiphenomenal and merely along for the ride and comes too late to do anything anyway, at least for real time stuff. But there's a trick to that and uh, the backward time effects, which we can come back to. But mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing is uh, that I've been embroiled in lately is uh, one potential implication is in uh, near death and out of, out of body experiences and even afterlife and, and, um, uh, reincarnation which is i've been fighting about online lately and because uh so i i think that consciousness is it occurs in this uh in this uh, scale invariant hierarchy and uh and a lot of people have brain models of a hierarchical system starting with the neuron as a fundamental yes on and off switch and then going upward in scale in size you know to, to slower and slower larger and larger and then, you know, in the EEG and then maybe the Schumann resonance or something like that. Um, but I think the real hierarchy is going the other way, going smaller, deeper, faster inward. And because you have microtubules in every cell and they have these same uh, resonance triplet patterns. And you see these at the scalp or actually any, all over the body because there's microtubules everywhere. Uh, you, you see them uh, best over the brain and uh, also at joints where there's a lot of... Uh, Osteoclast and osteoblast activities in the microtubules in the bone. Um, but um, uh, the, the, so it can happen at, at these various frequencies, including as you go faster and faster uh, with the triplets, you can actually get faster and smaller than, than, than biology and then even matter, even mass. Because in, in, if Roger's right, this has to go all the way down to the Planck scale. And so uh, in biologically, we, we go to 10 to the minus uh, 10 to the 15 hertz and the Planck scale is 10 to the 43. So that's a big step. Uh, but I, you know, this is where Nassim Harman and, and, and his group come in because they're looking at the structure or the geometry of space time. And mm -hmm. if they see, they're hinting that they may be seeing these triplets all the way down, which would be pretty, pretty amazing. And uh, that, uh, so the microtubules, resonate to some uh frequency pattern that goes all over the universe and this self-repeating uh frequency pattern is uh uh we've honor bond calls it a time crystal and time crystals i've been learning about recently and uh trying to learn about and uh they were actually uh so time a time crystal is something that repeats in a time domain with a frequency so a spatial crystal salt or diamond anything it just repeats periodically in space and so you have a lat crystal lattice in space spatially in a time crystal you have a system that may extend its space but it has uh 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 frequencies that repeat at different at different scale or sorry the same patterns repeat at different scales and uh and so like in a microtubule in kilohertz megahertz gigahertz terahertz and maybe all the way down now um uh, 
actually, uh, uh, technically a time crystal is only at one frequency, but there's something called a polyatomic time crystal that can be at multiple frequencies. And uh, so that's what Honor Brown's talking about. And uh, uh, polyatomic time crystals in microtubules, which could be a key feature of life because one thing life needs, so why, why would we want this? Well, one thing, we, we transcend scale. So things that have, have information at the, molecular level can be instantly uh, transmitted to the macro level. So for consciousness, that's exactly what you need. It may have something to do with the hologram too, but I can't can't quite figure that out yet, but we're getting there because I think the hologram is actually a pretty good model too. But the uh, the polyatomic time crystal may turn out to be an important discovery that Honorbaum made in, in, in biology. So it was first proposed for biology in a, in a general way, but not in a quantum way by uh, Art Winfrey in the 1960s. And then... Uh, uh, well, uh, Frank Wilczek, uh, who won a Nobel Prize for something else, proposed them in physics, but you have to pump them for, uh, and he proposed that in 2012. And I think somebody just did that. It had like 40 minutes of activity after you pump it in a technological device. But we're saying it's a quantum system that starts in the ground state, where the oscillator is in the ground state. And so it's kind of a, a uh, <laughs> As I was criticized by uh, Lee Cronin, because he said, "Well, it's it's a perpetual motion machine," and I said, "Yeah, but so is life, you know." And uh, so that's where we're at right now. Uh, time crystals may turn polyatomic time crystals may may turn out to be quite important. So how would and, you, sorry continue, Stuart? Well, I just want to finish that point, which is that if you get fast enough uh, with these oscillations, consciousness can still occur by. Uh, time t equals h bar over e sub g. But as if you, if the e gets bigger and bigger as you go faster and faster, t gets smaller. Well, the t gets smaller, so you get more entanglement. And uh, you could, uh, in principle, your consciousness could be non-local and quite literally leave the body and exist in space-time geometry. And uh, so I, I think you know I'm I don't claim any evidence for uh, out of body or you know uh, life after death or consciousness after death or uh, out, of, out of body or reincarnation, but I, I don't think they're impossible. I think they're plausible. If consciousness is in non-local in space-time, then any of this is possible. <laughs>